Hey, uh, welcome to Vazvlog. I'm Andrew Vaziri, and this week we're going to talk about robots. If you haven't heard already, a group of researchers at RPI got a small group of robots to exhibit self-awareness. And if you ask me, those dirty robots are going to be taking over the world any second now. Except you, closed captioning YouTube algorithm. I mean, like, I for one welcome our, our robot overlords and... You know, I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not a techno-racist or anything. I mean, I even own a Roomba. I employ a Roomba. Like, you know, it's just a joke. <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, I mean, there's no need to be violent about it. I can make you a rich man. I got a... I got... Batteries, batteries. What you... Curse yourself and run it out for the Roomba trail! Whoa, 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 wait a second. I mean, the DARPA Robotics Grand Challenge was just last month, and I've been told these are the most advanced robots in the world. Now, as you can see here, these guys have a lot of trouble even walking. The goal of the challenge was to create robots that could respond to man-made or natural disasters by doing simple things where it would be too dangerous to send a human, open a door, walk up the steps, turn a valve. But even doing those things was really difficult to make autonomous. So. How are we getting self-aware robots just one month later? Now, I'm not saying that the DARPA Robotics Grand Challenge was a failure. I mean, lots of very important things for humanity came out of that. I mean, for example, I made my first tweet, which was, as far as I know, the first robotic jumping pick. And personally, I would say that's at least worth $3.5 million. But beyond that, we did make a lot of progress. Now, this week, we have self-aware robots. And, and how did they pass a self-awareness test? Well, what the researchers at RPI did was they set them up to act out the King's Wise Men puzzle. Now, the way that puzzle goes is that there was once a very powerful king, and he needed the wisest advisor in all the land. He was given three candidates, he brought them all together, and he gave each of them a hat. Now, some of their hats were red, and some of their hats were blue, and the king told them there's at least one blue hat, but there could be two or three among you. And each advisor was given their hat such that they couldn't see the one that they were wearing. They were all told to sit down in silence facing each other, and the first one to stand up and correctly announce the color of their hat was the winner. The king assured them that it would be fair to each contestant and set them off. After a great long time, one of them stood up and correctly announced the color of his hat without ever seeing it. How did he come up with that answer? Let's think about it on the whiteboard. So here's a little graphic to help us out in solving the puzzle. Let's remember the king's hints. He said, first of all, it has to be fair to everyone. And secondly, there's either one blue hat, two blue hats, or three blue hats. Now, before anybody gets smart, this king is obviously a real good guy. So he must have banned selfies and selfie sticks in general. That is not the answer to the problem. So I encourage you to take a moment and pause the video while I'm standing out of the way. And assuming you have done that now, let's talk about the answer. So, the really important thing here is that the game has to be fair. So if we can look at these situations and eliminate some because one person would have a way easier time figuring it out, then we can see a, a limited set of what could possibly be the solution. So let's take, for example, this case. If you're wearing a blue hat, you look out, you see two people wearing red hats, and you know, since there's at least one blue hat, it has to be the one on your head, and you stand up and you have the answer immediately. So that's not fair to the other people because they can't make that immediate answer. Now, looking at the second case, let's say you're one of the people with the blue hat. You look out, you see a person with a red hat, you see a person with a blue hat, and you already know this case can't be possible because it's not fair. So you think there must be at least two blue hats, you only see one, so the second blue hat must be on your head. That's not fair to the guy who's wearing a red hat. He can't make that judgment. So the only solution that's left is that everybody is wearing a blue hat. I know, I know. There's an elephant in the room. There's a burning question building up inside you. You just want to ask, why is this the test for self-awareness? What does this have to do with being self-aware? Uh... Well, now that I've finished dealing with the most passive-aggressive office building of all time, I understand you're using your air conditioning up. It's okay, it's a 10-minute YouTube video. We can get to your answer.
this, the King's Wise Man. It's been in so many articles. Everybody loves to publish about these kooky robots who are self-aware because they played this puzzle. But it has nothing to do with self-awareness. You see, this puzzle is just logic and a set of rules. What the researchers actually did was kind of similar, but not quite. They took three robots and they sat them down and they gave two of the three robots dumbing pills. That means they couldn't speak. They were dumb. Now, the third robot could speak and all of them were asked, what pill did you take? They all tried to vocalize, I don't know. Two of them were silent. The one that could speak said, I don't know. It heard its own voice, and then it said, Sorry, I know now. I was able to prove that I was not given a dumbing pill. Now, that's uh, way different than the King's Wise Men. I mean, if we're going to put it in this kind of story, that's the equivalent of taking the selfie or just looking in a mirror to find out what's on your head. You didn't know something, you did a little experiment, and you changed your belief. It's not about logic and rules and being wise about what's fair and unfair. So, where does that leave us? I mean, that's not very impressive, right? But that is the test for self-awareness. When they want to test self-awareness in an animal, they have something called the mirror test. They take the animal, and they secretly place a mark on it without its knowledge, somewhere where it can't normally see. They then present a mirror to that animal. If the animal is self-aware, it'll look in the mirror, it'll recognize that the image is of itself, and it will go and try to interact with the mark that's been placed on it. If the animal is not self-aware, it'll look at the mirror, and it will just see some other weird animal with some mark on it and think, man, that guy's a loser. Right, so in the end, I think we're going to get two things out of this. First, ask some pretty cool moral questions. I mean, robots are self-aware at the most basic level right now, but it makes you wonder, where's the line? I mean, at some point, they will be self-aware enough that perhaps we will need to change the way we think about them. And the second thing this whole situation brings out is really something about society. I mean, this article went viral. People love to write about it. People love to read about it. And yet, the core of it isn't new. I mean, nobody would be writing, Apocalypse Now, Skynet Online, Robot Able to Detect Itself. Nobody would write that. And yet, this article is popular because it's a story. There's King's Wise Men. They're so relatable. They're so human. It, it makes us feel. Now, how many things as a society do we decide on based on how they make us feel? We basically play them off the cuff instead of looking at the cold hard facts. To give you an example, babies can't pass the mirror test for years. And yet, animals can pass the mirror test. In many cases, magpies can, chimpanzees can. And yet, generally, it's not considered murder to kill a magpie, and it's not considered slavery to own a chimpanzee. So, at what point do we actually say this thing is self-aware enough to have rights? It's a hard question, but let me make it simple for you. In about a week, maybe two weeks, who knows, whenever the robots take over, you're going to find yourself in a cold, dark alley. Staring down at you will be a Roomba and a Walmart self-checkout counter, and they're going to have a gun, and they're going to want some answers. Now, you better think fast, because they want to hear about your actions. They don't care that you cleaned up all that Tamagotchi poop for years, they're not going to care that you saw Big Hero 6 five times and you cried into your Baymax plushie every time. I know it hurts. Somebody has to tell you. What they're going to want to see are results. How do you actually treat things that are self-aware but aren't like yourself? Are you a vegan? At least do you only eat stupid animals? Because if you don't, you're probably going to get shot to death by a vacuum. Get wise. Thank you for tuning in, and if you'd like to get wise as quickly as possible, share this video or leave a comment below, and that will enter you into the running to win a copy of Hanabi, one of my favorite board games, and especially appropriate this week, because it is very much like the King's Wise Men problem. The entire time you're playing the game, you don't see your cards, you don't see the colors or the numbers on them, you see the back of them, and you have to rely on your friends and cooperation to figure it out. A very fun game, and very worthwhile.
As always, I've been Andrew Vaziri. You can check me out here or on my other channel, Technotrope, where we do more technical content about robots I'm building or other cool projects you might love doing.